Hello and welcome to the Yogscast. Today we're playing another strange game, um, which is actually an old Half-Life 2 mod. So oh. A couple of years old. Uh, someone sent it to us. If you'll just hit new game, uh, we'll get started. It's quite narrative driven. It's called the Stanley Parable. So Simon's playing it. I'm. Uh... Yeah, I'm in. So if you have any trouble, if you if you have any issues with the play during this, it's entirely my fault. This is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on a keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor next to his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although others might have considered it soul-rending, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. Until... <laughs> and then one day something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. What? What happened? What happened? He had been at his desk for nearly an hour when he realized that not one single order had arrived on a monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Look at those textures. Never in all Ooh. his years at the company had this happened. This complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid. Stanley found himself unable to move for the Who longest time. Who is this? Time. He's reading this. But as he He's came got a beautiful his voice. voice. It's beautiful, senses, isn't it? He got up from his desk and walked out into the hallway. Oh, oh. There you go. So now... I broke it. I blew my nose and I broke it. No, you're this. Stanley, so you have to, like, you know... I'm Stan Lee, the no, comic book St man. No, Stanley. The comic book man. The Stanley power... This is what you... This is your desk, this is your room, your office. There's obviously uh, oh, that's the next room. Someone else is working in there, but there's no one in there. So head, head, see if you can find someone else. That's your briefcase. You don't need that. Put your lunch in it. So E is to interact with things, but I don't think you need to interact with anything. No, it doesn't off. seem like it is much. Uh, Stanley decided to go oh. to the staff lounge to check on his co-workers. He never functioned well by himself and constantly needed support and guidance from others. So the thought of total solitude was terrifying to him. So of course there's other rooms here with all the other employees. I can't jump. I'm pressing space. I can't. Normal people don't just jump up in the air. So there's another office with someone's work that they're doing in their room. You know, but there's no one there. It's a bit sort of sinister, isn't it? It's a bit, it's a bit deserted. Oh. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Um. This was not the correct way to the employee lounge, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. So he turned left at the first open door and walked back in the right direction. So do I not have a choice, is it? Oh. Oh. Well. Nope. Um. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. Maybe this is why everyone had left. No one wanted to be around someone as bad at listening as him. Wow. And since he was walking into the middle of nowhere and thus ruining the entire story, <laughs> Stanley decided that he would punish himself. Uh -oh. So when he came to the elevator and the doors opened, he stepped inside and pushed the button to go up. Right? What? Well, you're being punished now for disobeying the narrator. So I'm punishing myself. You go, you pressed it. Oh. You're going up. So, why is this punishment going up in an elevator? I don't know. Who knows what's up there? Maybe it's the boss. Oh, maybe. Maybe it's, um... But, surely that's good. Maybe he would be able to explain what the hell's going on. That's true, we haven't met anyone yet. Who knows what's up here? Hmm. Oh. Um. Well, this looks a bit. Uh. 
It almost perplexed Stanley that he had actually gone and stepped into this metal trap. After all, it should have been no surprise that this thing would lead him to his death. Oh. But he thought to himself, this is simply the price to pay for ruining a perfectly I... good story. So he resigned um. and willingly accepted his fate. The inevitable You're not end to get out. toward which he had spent so long... St well, there's one way to get out. No, well, don't keep Sorry. going. How do you know? Fairly understand. Maybe it won't kill me. Maybe you're supposed to do this. Maybe you're supposed to disobey the uh, rules. Farewell, Stanley, cried the narrator as he sent his subject down the conveyor belt and into the enormous metal jaws. In a single visceral instant, Stanley was obliterated as the machine crushed every bone in his body, it's been killing paused. him instantly. Maybe. But that didn't happen. Uh... What? It's a shame then that for all his work it was such a meaningless victory for the narrator. Did he really think he would accomplish anything by murdering this disposable vessel? What the hell is going on? What? Why are there lift doors here? There's a chessboard. Have I broken the game? <laughs> what the hell? Oh, this is nice, isn't it? Can I get one of these for my office, Lewis? Um, I don't know what it does, but I think it looks cool. Does it play like tapes and CDs? Are they discs sticking out there oh, on the bottom? Yeah, it might be. It's like a zip disc. Oh my god, zip discs. That's a pigeon holes. Oh, monitors. There's nothing on them. Every possible choice Stanley could make had been designed for him long before he ever set foot here. The narrator wanted to kill him. Stanley was already dead from the moment he hit start. Oh, I'm starting to think I shouldn't have. Stop pressing E on everything. Just press E to get out. Um, I'm not sure you should be able to even get into that thing. How do you do this? <laughs> okay, press escape. Let's, let's, let's create a brand new game. Okay, take two. So I managed to break it first time. Stanley decided to go to the staff lounge to check on his co-workers. Do you think I he should actually go to the staff room? I think room it's entirely up to you how you want to play it. Well, I broke the game last time, so... Well, maybe then. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Um... Well, uh, we reckon the narrator's going to try and kill us anyway, regardless of what we do. Yeah. I know there's a lot of different endings to this game, though. So, so we can't go through all of them. We can't go through all the different endings, no. Okay. Ah. As Stanley entered the lounge, he was horrified to find not a single person here. He decided he would walk up to see his boss, hoping that he would find an answer there. Boss? God, it's all these things. It's the Half-Life Half -Life. 2 stuff, yeah. It's beautiful. So, oh. I guess you have to go up, go up <coughs> anyway to see your boss anyway. Hello, sir? There's no one around, is there? Hello? Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. So again, I have the choice to follow the story or to... To break the rules. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Where's the boss's office? Entering his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. It was at this point that he began to feel dizzy and a little sick, and even thought he might pass out when suddenly he noticed a keypad next to the filing cabinet in the corner of his boss's office. Stanley had never seen this panel before, 
and had no idea what combination of numbers would produce any result. Is there a clue? In fact, only Stanley's boss knew this, since the panel withheld access to the boss's greatest, darkest secret. And so he had assigned the keypad a combination that only he could possibly know. The number of his freshman dorm number in college. One, nine, <laughs> five, uh. seven. <laughs> but of course, Stanley couldn't possibly have known this. Um. No, that didn't work. Oh, that's clever. So what was it? One, nine, seven, five. No. No, it's one, nine. Stanley just sat around. One, nine, four, seven. Trying to input anything on the keypad was useless. One. Since he could never possibly what was know it? that the combination was one, nine, one, five, nine, seven. five, seven. Oh. Yet incredibly, wow. by simply pushing random buttons uh, on the keypad, did you see that, Lewis? Stanley so happened to input the correct code by sheer luck. Sheer luck. Amazing. So Stanley amazing. ventured forth into the newly opened passageway. Oh my god, what's down here? Is it a metal chamber? Mila Kunis was standing there completely As naked. He drew deeper <laughs> into the bowels of the building. Stanley had no idea where he was or what this place held. And just as he began to think he might not discover a thing, he emerged into a long room to find... Oh my god, it's... Rose and rows of monitors. Screens with a number above it. Stanley noticed, however, that these were not random numbers, but the number of employees who worked in the building. No shit, Sherlock. Even his own number, 427, <gasps> had a place on the wall. There it is, Lewis. But why a setup so elaborate, he asked. Was this simple surveillance or something even more? And as if in answer to his question, the wall slid open before him. No. Oh. Revealing the ultimate truth of the situation. Oh my god. What is it? An enormous control panel Stanley discovered, but not one that controlled simple machinery. Buttons were labelled with emotions. What? Happy, sad. Levers and knobs controlled actions. Walking, eating, doing work, or watching TV. Every input on this device monitored not the functions of a machine, but of a human being. Are they controlling me? And the reality began to sink in. <gasps> Stanley, like so many other no! people, reduced to no! images on a monitor, had been under someone's no! control, always at the mercy of this oh, <laughs> Could this have been the only reason employee number 427 was content with his boring job? That a machine had altered his emotions to accept it blindly? He began to feel an unbridled rage, and at the peak of his anger, something happened. A spark. Stanley looked up and saw the generator overhead, still providing some small amount of power to the machine, keeping it alive. And knowing that this generator was all that kept the controls running, oh, Stanley moved to the coincidence. The That's exactly where I just went to. to climb towards the rafters. So I got so angry that I overloaded the machine. Uh, no, I don't think so. You just... Ah! It's telling you that you got angry. The higher Stanley climbed, the closer he felt to freedom, the further from enslavement. Oh, hello, sis. Is that doing anything? There you go. It's done. Oh! Blackness. Uh oh. Power gone. All alone. Oh. And then. Mila Kunis <laughs> stood there completely <laughs> naked. <laughs> Hooray! Oh! So, just behind me, there was. Freedom! As he stepped through the door into the fresh outside this was air, a, triumph. a feeling of liberation rushed wow. through Stanley's body. He had seen power, he had seen enslavement, and he had destroyed it. Yeah! The underling was in control now. He had found his leading role. Yeah! 
Stanley never discovered why everyone had gone missing. Oh. Nor how and when he had come under the machine's control. Oh. But it didn't upset him terribly. Nah. Because he knew that this was how things were meant to happen. Yeah. All he felt was a delight unlike any he had ever known before. Never again would he follow someone else's orders without question. Never again would anyone tell Stanley where to go, no. what to do, or how Fuck to the feel. police! No more bosses. No more instructions on a screen. Stanley decides for himself now. Yeah! And he stepped out into the world. And he felt the cool breeze upon his skin. And Stanley was happy. How many endings are there, do you know? I don't know. I sort of want Literally to know what happens. Literally millions. I sort of want to know what happens if you don't fuck up the, the route that we took. So going the wrong way from the start? Yeah. So just go back to where we were. Okay, so we're back here. Um, don't go in there. No. For sake. No, um, not this time. I'm not falling for your tricks again, oh Melody. I thought you were going to just troll me there. Um, oh, I should have done. So, I mean, this lady narrator, late. she's not particularly nice either. I mean, she says everyone's trying to kill me and I'm just a vessel. Oh, this is like a crushing thing. Ooh. A crushinator. No, no, staying there. That's good. Oh! So, if you've gone this way, does Why? this lead outside as well? Uh. Apparently so. Oh! There's no salvation for either of these two, I'm afraid. The narrator had as little power over Stanley as Stanley did over the paths that he walked. R right. But listen to me. This story is not over. You can still save these two. You can stop the programme before they both fail. Push escape and press quit. There's no what? other way to beat this game. As long as you move forward, you'll be walking someone else's path. Oh, God! Stop now. Oh, and God! Be your only what do I do, choice. Lewis? Whatever you do, choose it. Don't let time choose for you. Oh, uh, what do I do? <laughs> what do I do? You've got infinite time to choose now. Okay, well, we don't have to... There's no, there's no stress anymore. So, what should we do? I want to see what happens. Game. You, get, you get crushed. Don't let time... So... I've been playing it through this whole time, and you take over for one second, <laughs> and you get us killed. Mila Kunis. <laughs> oh my god. Mila Kunis then appears. <laughs> Hello. That's Martin. Hello. She said. Martin Littlewood then appeared completely naked. <laughs> oh no. Hello, everybody. You can, you can steer, and I'll press W. Okay. Stanley decided Teamwork. to go to the staff lounge to check on his co-workers. I like this story. Well by himself. I like the man. I don't like the lady narrator. And guidance from others. So the but she was sort of trying to help us, I think, there at the end. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door. Oh, God. Are we going to go down the stairs or for the boss's office? I think that will just lead us round to the, the elevator. He was horrified to find not a single person here. He decided <laughs> he would walk up to see his boss. I think it's this is working. This is good. We're a good team. I think <laughs> We're a good team. I'm good at pressing W. You're good at moving a mouse. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Nope. Nope. But Stanley just couldn't do it. He considered the possibility of facing his boss, of admitting that he had left his post during work hours. He might be fired for that. Oh, no. And in such a competitive economy, was it really <laughs> worth taking that oh, risk? No. All because he believed everyone had disappeared. His boss would think he was crazy. And then something occurred to Stanley. What? Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. Oh. Everyone I know simply vanishing out of the blue, there's almost no other explanation for it. And a nagging um, fear began to creep up in his mind. Uh oh. Questions that had been there all along. He just hadn't put his finger on uh -oh. them. Uh oh. This isn't it good. For example, why couldn't he see his feet when he looked down? Why did doors close automatically behind him wherever he went? And for that matter, these rooms were starting to look pretty familiar. 
Was he just walking around in circles? Where am I, he thought. And the more he found himself unable to answer these questions, the more questions continued to arise, until he came to the issue that had been slowly boiling until he could ignore it no longer. Why is there a voice in my head, dictating everything that I'm doing and thinking? Suddenly, every door slammed shut. No! Stanley screamed. I need to get out of here. I need to know that there's something out there. I need to know it's not just all in my head. Oh my god! And screamed and clutched at his skull as the voice grew harsher and the music in the background rose higher and higher. And then, moments before collapsing to the ground, Stanley clenched his fists and screamed to anyone who might be listening, I'm not real! Curtis! I'm not real! <laughs> Don't believe any of it! None of it's real! And then everything went black. Uh, crap. This is the story of a woman Wait, named what? Mariella. Sorry? What? Who? Mariella woke up on a day like any other. She got um. dressed, went to work, clocked in, clocked out, and then she walked home. But her walk on this day was interrupted <laughs> by the body of a man who had stumbled through town talking and screaming to himself and then collapsed dead on the sidewalk. Sus. Moments after seeing him, she would turn, run to the nearest police station and call for an ambulance. But for just a few brief seconds, she merely stood there, unable to move. The tragedy was not the death of a single person. It was that she would never know this man's story, never hear in his own words what had happened to him or what he believed had happened to him. For to know these things would be to exist inside the head of the man himself. So all she could do was observe from a distance and pity him. Oh. But Mariella had places to be and people to meet with, very important people, yeah. whose impressions of her would affect her career She's going for and a new job. the rest of her life. Stanley's job. She stood there for only a moment, Probably. looking down at the body. And then she ran. Did we win? I've no idea. Did we win? We, we won. Won. We won, everybody. Oh, good job. What a really cast. cool game. We did it. So that's three different endings we found. Apparently, there's three other ones. Oh, if, I wonder if there's a way because there was that key pad thing. If you could enter Mila, yeah, would it open up a thing? She's there. Oh, hello. Because that's how she speaks. I guess so. Hello, Simon. Hello, Simon. Hello, <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Oh. It's a little Warwick Davis wearing a Mila Kunis mask. That was totally good. Nude. So it's free, it's a mod, it's easy to install on Steam. Check it out.